This is our second video applying the law of cosines to solve problems. We'll do a couple more applications in this video. The height of a radio tower is 500 feet and the ground on one side of the tower slopes upward at an angle of 10 degrees. How long should a guy wire be if it's to connect the top of the tower and be secured at a point on the slope side 100 feet from the base of the tower? Then we'll have a second question asking how long should a guy wire be if it's to connect to the middle of the tower and be secured at a point 100 feet from the base on the flat side. We'll round both our answers to the nearest hundredth. So let's start with part A. Looking at this triangle right here. I think I'm going to draw a breakout. So we know the bottom of this is 100 feet, and we know that the height is 500 feet, and we're looking for the length of this wire. We also know that the angle down here in the corner is going to be 80 degrees, because we're at a 10 degree slope, so we're doing just 90 minus 10 to get 80 degrees. I know that law of sines is not applicable because I don't have a known pair, so we're going to use law of cosines. We always start with the side across from the angle that's known or the one we're looking for. So we're going to have x squared equals 500 squared plus 100 squared minus 2 times 500 times 100 times cosine of 80 degrees. To solve for x, we'll need to take the square root of both sides. And I just put this whole big thing in my calculator at one time, this big square root. Plugging this into our calculator and rounding to the nearest hundredth, we get x to be equal to 492.58 in our unit is feet. Let's move on to part b. All right, we're looking on the other side here. We're trying to figure out how long the guy wire would be if we're connecting at the middle of the tower and this is flat ground so we will have a 90 degree angle here. I'm going to draw another breakout triangle. We're looking for the length of the wire. We know that the base distance is 100. And since this wire is attaching halfway up our tower, this side's going to be 250. Since we have a right triangle here, both Sokotoa and Pythagorean Theorem apply. So we don't even need trigonometry to find this one. Uh, we're just going to use Pythagorean Theorem. You know, I'm going to change my variable to y just so it, we don't confuse it with the x and Part A. All right, so our hypotenuse squared is equal to 100 squared plus 250 squared. And again, we're going to need to take the square root of both sides. And again, I would just plug this whole big radical in my calculator at one time. Square root of 100 squared plus 250 squared. We'll round our answer to the nearest hundredth. We get y to be equal to 269.26 feet.
In our next example, a surveyor wishes to find the distance between two inaccessible points A and B on opposite sides of a lake. While standing at point C, she finds that side B is 259 meters and side A is 423 meters and the angle ACB measures 132 degrees 40 minutes. We want to find our distance C. Okay, so looking at our triangle here. We know two sides. We're trying to find the third side and we know one of the angles. We don't have a known pair, so law of sines is not applicable. We're going to use law of cosines. When writing out law of cosines, we always start with the side that is opposite the angle we either know or are trying to find. So our law of cosines equation is going to be c squared equals 259 squared plus 423 squared minus 2 times 259 times 423 times cosine of 132 degrees 40 minutes. We'll need to take the square root of both of these to find our side C. And as always, I would just plug this whole radical in my calculator at one time. It's too easy to make a mistake when you do it individually. Or have some kind of rounding error. So we just want to plug it all in at one time. Plugging into our calculator and rounding to the nearest hundredth, we get side C to be 628.10 and our unit is meters.